This video is about performing the solenoid adjustments of a Biogram 4000. I will show how to align the magnet coil and I will show how to adjust the position of the solenoid switches. For more information please visit my blog at biolover.blogsport.com or go to my website at www.biolover.com. This here is the relevant section of the service manual. The adjustment of the magnet coil is very similar to the 4002 and 4004 models. One simply needs to make sure that when the plunger, the um, armature, is fully extended that this arm here is in the right position. And so the manual here prescribes that this arm needs to be parallel to the carriage mechanism. One of the main differences between the Biogram 4000 and the later 4002 and 4004 models is that the solenoid of the Biogram 4000 directly activates these switches as the tone arm goes down to the platter. So when the solenoid is activated then a spring pulls down this arm here and this here pushes the tone arm mechanism that the tone arm is lowered and the damper here makes sure that this here moves slowly. And so as this here moves and the tone arm sinks down to the platter these switches here are opened. So when the tone arm is up these switches are closed. The uh, switch on top here, D, that is the switch that turns on the tracking mechanism. Switches E here, they take care of the audio muting, so when they are closed then uh, audio is, is short-circuited to ground and so the amplifier does not hear when the needle hits the vinyl. So one needs to make sure when one adjusts the position of these switches, this can be done by opening these two screws and moving this uh, circuit board, one needs to make sure that the needle is already on the platter before these switches here are being opened. So this is what one needs to achieve here by adjusting this PCB. Now the third switch, that is the current limiter for the solenoid. When the solenoid is activated first, a large current is permitted to rush into the solenoid so we get enough force to really move that plunger down against the spring forces and so forth here. But once the plunger is down, all we need to do is keep it down and hold it in position and this can be done with a much lower current in this uh, coil. So when the switch here is opened, an additional resistor is being put into the circuit and that limits the current that goes into this solenoid. So this is actually very important. Whenever you do an adjustment here, you should make sure that when the arm is down, measure this with a voltmeter, you need to make sure that these contacts are really open. Otherwise you get a high current here for a long time in this coil and that cannot be good for its longevity. Here you see the relevant section of the circuit diagram. These are the four switches and this here is the solenoid coil. Now the two switches over here, those are the left and right channel audio muting switches. All they do is connect the audio signals to ground when they're closed. The switch over here, that is the tracking enable switch. So whenever this one opens, the uh, tracking sensors are connected to the 24 volts, right? When, they are, when the switch is closed, it short circuits the 24 volts across this 10K resistor to ground. And so the uh, light sensitive resistors in the tracking sensor cannot operate. The fourth switch, that is the solenoid current limiter, and this switch simply bridges this current limiting resistor that controls otherwise the current into the uh, coil. It short circuits this resistor to ground while the coil is activated and so this creates a much larger current that goes into the uh, coil. Okay, let's have a look at the adjustments. First I want to show you how a wrongly adjusted coil uh, behaves. So this here is the, is the coil and now we need to adjust its position in a way that the plunger that's inside here when it's fully extended down moves this arm here, this is arm B from the service manual, that this arm here is parallel to this circuit board or, or parallel to the uh, threaded rod here of the uh, carriage. So just in parallel to the carriage mechanism. Okay, let's see how this looks like. So I, I put it too far down and so you see here that it actually hits the uh, circuit board and this is of course not what you want. So the first step for the adjustment is to remove this spring so you can access those two bolts. The two bolts need to be loosened a little bit and you see here the mounting holes are oblong and so this allows to push the 
coil up and down and so now with a couple fingers you adjust this arm B here that it's parallel and then with the other finger you push the solenoid up as far as you can and now you have that condition that the arm is the plunger is fully extended and the arm is here parallel okay so now the screws are tightened and then of course we have to put the spring back And now you see that when we push it fully down, we don't hit the circuit board anymore and we are about parallel. Once the solenoid is in its correct position, the next step is to adjust the current limiter switch. And this switch needs to be adjusted that when the uh, arm B here is parallel, that we have a gap here that's between 1 millimeter and 0.5 millimeter. So here it's a little bit too large. You see that when I press it down, it's a little bit more than 1 millimeter. To adjust this board, what you need to do is open these two screws. The one here you can hardly see, just a little bit here. Um, they are pretty difficult to get at because they are underneath the wires here and very close to the uh, threaded rod. So while I do this here, you will see a lot of my hand, but very little of the uh, actual action at the uh, screws. But you get the idea. So you can stick the screwdriver between those wires and open those two screws and then basically the circuit board here needs to be uh, pushed down a little bit and so this is best done with a screwdriver that you can jam in here while you tighten the uh, screws again. This can be a little bit tricky and uh, it can take a few tries to get this board to the right position. tightening the screws now and then we hope for the best so let's see and so you see now this gap here is a little bit smaller maybe one millimeter okay the final task is to adjust this board and here the criterion is that the uh, audio muting switches only open after the needle hits the uh, record and so when you push this board down, then this arm here has a little bit more time before the switch opens. And if you push it up, it has less time. So when it takes too long after hitting the platter, so you don't hear the music for a couple turns, then you want to push this up. If you hear the needle hit the platter, then you move this down. The, the switch up here, the position is not so important as long as the uh, contacts are open when the uh, solenoid is fully extended. So let's see how to do this. So you just open these two screws and then you can move the board until you get the right timing. Right, and so now you can push this and here we go. Like with the lower board, this can be a little bit tricky and so it's may take a few tries until you get the right position of this board that you have the right timing uh, after the needle sets down. Once you think it's in the right position then you simply tighten these bolts and that's about it. Okay, there is one final step that we need to accomplish and that is to verify that the current limiting switch really opens. This switch is really very important because if it doesn't open you have a high current through the coil and I think if this current goes for a long time then it is very possible to burn out this coil. Now the way to do it conveniently is to connect at the emitter of transistor 4 that controls the current through the coil and measure against ground. So whenever the resistor is in play then of course you see a voltage drop across the resistor and I measured in this particular turntable about 4 volts. So if you don't get something like 4 volts uh, at the emitter of the transistor 
then something is fishy and you need to look at this switch again. Okay, this concludes my video. Now you know how to adjust the solenoid in a Biogram 4000. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.